Oh, hi. It's Baron Dodger, and I just thought I'd share a letter to Baba Rashid of Aligned Community Care and Alex A. Voss from Upscale Care, my NDIS providers. <coughs> and this letter is sent to IBAC, ICAC, um, the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, um, NCAT, the National Anti-Corruption Commission, and the um, Attorney General. It's really interesting. The let and this is I did an AI summary of the letter, and this is just to introduce it. The letter you provided to Baber and Alex at Aligned Community Care outlines severe convenience regarding your care, accommodation, and well-being. It accuses them of gross negligence, abuse, and failure to meet the obligations they are paid to uphold as your NDIS providers. The letter highlights multiple issues, including <coughs> eviction threat. You're at risk of being evicted under their care, and you state that if that occurs, it will prove that those appointed to care for you have become my abusers. Lack of basic necessities. You've been denied access to basic utilities like a working phone and internet, which has severely impacted your ability to function and support yourself. This isolation exacerbates my distress. Medical neglect. You point out that you have not received necessary psychiatric care, medication, e.g. my dexamphetamine script and HIV medication, preventative or other forms of health support, leading to the reliance on street drugs. Dum -bum -bum. Denial of professional support. You have been blocked from accessing a psychologist, drug and alcohol counselling, financial advice, and all legal support, services you need for recovery, recovery and stability. Five, corruption and neglect. You accuse the organisation of intentionally prolonging your suffering by denying professional recommendations that would have provided you with necessary accommodation and care, such as SEALs, Supported Independent Living Package, this is framed as part of a wider corruption within the NDIS. Six, rejection to justice. You've tried to fire the organisation at Upscale Care, but have been present, prevented from doing so. Furthermore, Upscale Care has advised that the next property to, 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 for you to go to has raised the rent, further complicating your situation and pushing you towards worse conditions. Moral and legal accountability. The letter accuses Baber and Alex of criminal negligence and corruption, holding them personally responsible for the breach of the UN Human Rights Charter. I demand immediate action to rectify the situation and warn that I will pursue legal action if my concerns are not addressed. Eight, V2K in surveillance. I also accuse them of setting up a torture chamber with surveillance and V2K, voice to skull technology that contributes to my ongoing torment. Um, and so this is the letter, kind of more in my words, but that was a summary of it. And it's a pretty wild ride. Have a listen. So it's an Subject, urgent response regarding care and accommodation concerns. Dear Baba Rashid from Aligned Community Care and Alex um, Abos at Upscale Care. Um, Baba, yours is a $10 million company. I have next to nothing, just sentence. The privilege you wield to further victimise me who was already a victim is cowardly and you should be ashamed. I'm deeply concerned about the current state of my care and accommodation and I need assurances that eviction will not proceed if I'm evicted under your care, would signify that my carers, who are paid to support my welfare, have become my abusers. You are appointed by the NDIS to ensure my well-being, which includes housing, and it has been proven that Cal Graham, my support coordinator from the NDIS, has blocked other providers from assisting me. This situa situation raises serious concerns regarding corruption and the adequacy of the care I'm receiving. As per the lease, you're required to provide me with a working phone, which I still don't have, severely impacting my ability to generate income and communicate. I can't even call you or another provider, and I'm blocked anyway. This is the systemic betrayal I describe in my new autobiography, Betrayed, Moved, Forsaken, which is at barrendodger.com.au. I've been unable to access my dexamphetamine prescription, forcing me to rely on expensive and harmful street drugs. I require immediate psychiatric care to address this and the failure to provide such care or even a psychologist reflects a severe level of neglect. You've also failed to provide me with access to a psychologist, drug and alcohol counselling, financial advice and legal support, all of which fall within your remit and are necessary for my recovery and stability. This continued lack of support only elongates my suffering. I offered a $10,000 bonus to remain here as I'm extremely distressed as soon as justice arrives, but it seems you are on board in denying me justice. You've confirmed plans to move me to a homeless shelter and take quote unquote necessary precautions. This would separate me from my companion therapy dog Crystal Lasky, whom you've refused to take to the vet when she's been sick 
and such actions further highlight the lack of consideration for my welfare and a deliberate rejection of my care, my dog's care, and reveals an intentional malice. There is still no fence on the yard and I can't take her out to wee all day long. There is no bin and you took the furniture I did have revealing the barest minimum edits to a living arrangement indicating I was just set up for you to abuse me. Moreover, I'm now past the time when I should have received HIV preventative medication after a risky exposure event, underscoring the ongoing neglect I face under your care and the criminal negligence. The situation amounts to criminal negligence, especially when considering the corruption with the NDS and your refusal to conduct an S100 review on a reviewable decision on the rejection of my SEALs accommodation, despite two professional recommendations. You would get the million dollar package if you enforced the professional recommendations, but, but you would deny me doing that or accepting it in order to keep me homeless and impoverished, relieving your, revealing your corruption. I would attempt to defy you both in upscale care, but I'm being prevented from doing so. Upscale has worsened the situation by advising the next property to charge me even higher rent, making it financially impossible for me to move forward. These actions further contribute to the corruption and neglect that I'm experiencing and would mean that you could be satisfied I am forced again by coercion to sign a lease in worse conditions to keep my dog the only thing I have left besides you and your hatred of me. It's a wild letter. I request immediate action to address these concerns and prevent further harm to my wellbeing, otherwise I shall call police and report for corruption and criminal negligence throughout. And I have sent it to IBAC who investigated the police and ICAC in New South Wales and the AAT and the Ombudsman, the Attorney General, the National Anti-Corruption Commission and the NDS Quality and Safeguards Commission. I demanded a phone, internet, fence, bin, human and legal rights and my dignity restored, medicine, psychiatrist, drug and alcohol and finance. It's up to you to do the right thing and what you'll pay for. If I'd been given $73,000 three months ago, which has been spent on my NDIS plan, I would have been able to look after myself. Um, the internet needs connecting before close of business today. I've spent $600 on data, the price that would have paid for the rent if the lease had been honest, honoured with the internet provided. I'm also writing to formally address the ongoing negligence, abuse and disregard for my finance, my wellbeing, for which I hold you directly responsible. As someone who has been placed in a position of authority over my care, you have a duty to ensure my needs are met in a comprehensive and holistic manner. However, it's become clear that not only have you failed in this duty, but you have also participated in a series of actions that have contributed to my persecution, harassment and torture. I hold you accountable as the linchpin for a wider systemic failure that stretches across multiple areas of my life, including the rejection of my work cover, the delegitimisation of my relationship with an ASIO agent, an $83,000 tax debt, um, my homelessness, my being banned at AFCA, the Australian Financial Complaints Authority, the Australian Human Rights Commission not investigating human rights abuses and the inability to report a single crime to the police. <laughs> Additionally, as a rejected whistleblower, I've never had access to proper legal representation and your actions have only elongated my suffering. This delay in justice is a clear breach of the UN Human Rights Charter and I'll hold you personally responsible for this violation. Every aspect of my prosperity has been reduced or rejected in an illegal manner and the failings of my case have been pinned directly on you. You have refused to acknowledge the complete scope of my holistic condition and have demonstrated no care for my person or my wellbeing. Anyone would think you're, I'm upset with them. Your conduct is reprehensible and morally bankrupt. Despite checks and balances you may claim to have in place because you've put me in a house, you can't escape responsibility for the harm that has been done to me. I already filed appeals with appropriate human rights organisations, including the United Nations Court of Human Rights, and I'll be using your actions as central evidence in my case. It is clear that you were placed in your role with the intention to abuse, harass, intimidate and persecute me. Please be aware that I now will have legal representation and an enduring power of attorney who will act on behalf in this matter. Your failure to acknowledge my condition, coupled with your disgraceful behaviour, will not go unchecked. You'll be held accountable for your actions, both legally and morally. I expect a response to this letter. An immediate cessation of the neglect and abuse I've endured, failure to do so will result in action. You're really very confident that you've been told, I have no power and I have no voice and I have no agency. I can't go to the police. I'm a rejected whistleblower and I can't get a lawyer and I have no control. And you're right. All I have is my sentience and this letter and my intention to take this 
to the High Court of Australia and get my justice. Otherwise, I want you to murder me in person, come to my door and slit my throat. It is the equivalent of what you're doing to me in a snide, barely hidden, privileged and conceited way, the height of deceit and audacity. I'd respect you if you meant what you said and follow through on your hate of me and the fact that you embody a broader movement of the targeted killing of a scapegoat. Home is where a place where you're welcomed, you, gave, you have peace and love, but you've not provided that. You are not love, nor embody it, but I do. I have it and the ethical and moral upper hand to your deceit in my honesty. You've provided a torture chamber complete with V2K and surveillance that creates conditions in a conscious way of utter neglect and contempt for my person and a thinly disguised hate that is the epitome of cowardice. Prove me wrong. I think that's a pretty wild letter. Anyone yeah, think I was upset with them? Yeah, that's so.